So I'm here with Bush and Mo from Learning the Brave. Hello. How you guys doing? Very, very well. well. Yeah, very yeah. Good. Just uh, saw you guys sound checking. Sounded awesome. Thank yeah, very much. Very loud. Seem to have the desired effect. <laughs> yeah, can't hear anymore. Loud music is always good music. Well, that's, that's debatable actually. <laughs> always good. Mostly the best type. I think, yeah. Personally, I think probably for both of us actually. Yeah, definitely. Best type of music is loud music. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I've got to start off. The Days War is one of the best debut albums I've heard in, I would say, 10 years. Oh, really? It really is. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank, like, you. thank you very much. There's certain albums that have stuck with me through time. Like, I can pinpoint parts of my life to the music I was into, like Linkin Park Hyper Theory. That was when I was in school and stuff like that. And I, I really think this album is going to be one of those albums that stays with me for that amount of time. Because every single song is just gut wrenching, it's just it just pulls your heartstrings, it's just like is that motion in it every single track. But when you were writing it, did how would you go about writing it, really? Um well when we when we wrote the album we didn't have any plan, we had no agenda, we had nothing that we wanted to sound like or anything like that. Literally wasn't you know, those thoughts didn't even enter our heads. It was just a case of knuckling down, going into a rehearsal room and just see you know, see what so came out. So it wasn't premeditated or anything because when we get, you know, we're told our music, our music can't really get pigeoned. <laughs> I think he said, our pigeon can't get the music hold. Okay. But, um, it's possible as well. Yeah, we didn't, yeah, we didn't really have an agenda, so it's just, you know, what came out was just what was sort of created at the time. Yeah. I don't know how it happened. I was there, but I've got, I've got no idea how <laughs> yeah, it Yeah, it's a bit hard to recall sometimes, but, I mean, we take a long time writing songs. We, yeah. We kind of um, throw away probably three times as much as we keep. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> so when was the first song that made the album? When was that first written? How long would it be like? Um, the first, the first, would I be right in thinking that the first song would have been Victory Line that he that wrote as a band, or something yeah. like that? Um, so, cool. five years? Probably. Something like that, yeah. Five, mm. five years, four years, four five years. That's yeah. when the uh, very early ideas sort of started. Mm. Yeah. Before we even had Rearing a name and all the rest of it. Yeah. Mm. I've seen you've uh, announced yesterday about the uh, the re album. Redux, yeah. Re yeah. How, for why did uh, that come about? Um, it was you know, I mean we've we've sort of moved labels and stuff. Obviously we started off on Hassan and then moved moved over to Columbia and things like that. So um, we've got a fairly big team of like really great people that just come at us with really good ideas and yeah. stuff like that. So when that was first suggested to us, it was definitely something we were interested in. Um, you know, standard issues of albums for for me personally are just sometimes a bit. You know, if you get two extra songs on the end and stuff like that, you boring. Know, yeah, a couple sometimes of they can be. You know, but, yeah. but you know, some deluxe editions are just amazing, like the Jimmy Eat World, Bleed American. I probably shouldn't say Bleed American, but the Jimmy Eat World. That album. Um, yeah. That album. Yes. The, you know, the yeah. deluxe edition of that to me is an absolute masterpiece because it's got so much extra bonus content and stuff on it. Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, have just throwing ideas around really to of what to put on an extra disc on the album. Because if you're gonna buy a deluxe edition of something, a redux edition of something, it's, well, it's the victory edition. It's victory yeah, edition. Yes, yeah, good point. Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, honestly, We're on the road for three weeks. We? Yeah, where are we? <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it needs to be worthwhile and something that you can collect and be proud of. Oh, good value for money, basically, is what you know yeah. was the was the you know, the aim. Because obviously you're. Encouraging probably some people to buy something they've already got in, in another kind of mm. format. So to have the extra disc with what ten, yeah, ten tracks, be about ten, if not more actually. So there'd be four, four brand new tracks that people won't have heard at all unless they've come to see us live. There's, we've been playing a few of those on the tour, and yeah. um, the Redux stuff is basically um, taking songs from the Days War completely sort of stripping them down and then rebuilding them with different instrumentation structures and stuff like that's that. That's the idea that I really like. I really thought when you said that about that especially I was like yes that's a really smart idea. It's kind of like the almost reanimation what Linkin Park did. Yeah. Where they yeah, broke yeah. it down and rebuilt it. I, like, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's a fresh idea instead of just literally like you said doing the extra couple so of tracks. Be, yeah there'll be four of those on the uh, on the disc as well. So uh, yeah I mean it's just a, definitely trying to give people something, something extra yeah. and I mean you know it's the equivalent of kind of an EP's worth of new material, I suppose, and then the extra stuff as well. So yeah, I mean you have to, in my opinion, you have to put new songs on it. You know, yeah. Like, uh, it's been Days War's been out since you know for quite a while now. So I mean, most most of the new songs on it are drum and bass. You know, so <laughs> that's the direction we're going to be going. In. <laughs> yeah. 
the Skrillexy yeah. and the new stuff is sounding. So. That's the new album to come? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a concept album without mm. yeah, washing up. I don't know. <laughs> don't so, <make> it. <laughs> what was like the original fire that kind of brought you guys together and like kind of made you want to do what you do? Well, I think we all came, you know, from the local music scene, as uh, I think a lot of bands kind of come together that way, and um, as they should. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But you know, from different different bands, yeah. various things were going on at the time, and um, you know, not we weren't all happy with the situation we were in, so we sort of uh, whatever was going on sort of ended in whatever way, and um, we got back together, and you know, we knew basically worked for us at the time, wanted to work together, um, and we all kind of seemed to have a similar similar goals and visions and stuff. I mean, not that we had anything particular in mind other than to make the music that we wanted to yeah. make, you know, but um, just uh, like-minded people, really, and, uh, yeah, just kind of went well, on from there. certainly worked out for you guys. Yeah, yeah yes, I really guess. Yeah. But I look back to that time, I'm, I'm like, I don't know what kept us going, really, yeah. you know, because there wasn't, there wasn't anything that was outside of this band that was keeping us going, really, like, a goal to be, you know, even get a record deal it wouldn't have crossed our mind when we were writing the record. It was, you know, we, just, we put it all together, and then once it was together, there was like it sort of pricked up a few people's ears, so it sort of got taken out of our hands a little bit. Yeah. And then, like we, we've said a lot of times, we nearly self-released it and just gave it away to friends and put it online straight away. But um, it was our it was our manager at the time, James, a friend of ours, and he just kept pushing us and like, you know, you might have something here. He's like. Don't put it online yet. <laughs> and and thank you know thank thank God we didn't because that's when everything sort of started rolling. Yeah. yeah. We would have been very good at taking things one step at a time, haven't we? You know, not sort of getting mm. not jumping too far ahead because otherwise you kind of lose track of what you're doing and you don't get a chance to enjoy it. I mean, it's it's tricky enough when you're constantly busy to to take stock of things anyway. So um, yeah, I mean, the first step was to write the album and record it, and then from there on it was kind of. It yeah, just took course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I do like that though. I like the fact that you were just making music because you wanted to make music, not because you wanted the fame, the fortune, everything like that. You're doing it for the passion. Absolutely. And that, that's, I think that's probably why the album has come across in that way. It's just so emotive and things like that. I think that's probably the main reason for it. Cause just, yeah, we don't know how else to. No, we did, we did, we did it because we just sort of had to. <laughs> <laughs> it was really weird because there was, you know, there was, there was nothing else for, that we really could be doing except sort of like working, which we have been for years, you know, um, <laughs> we just sort of carried on and got our heads down and, and done it and, and like I say, I have no idea why or why we didn't stop because we, you know, completely broke. Like, <laughs> Basically, um, yeah, working during the day and then spending the evenings in a cold industrial estate somewhere, yeah. writing and rehearsing and sometimes you just thought, God, you know, yeah. just do that. I mean, the chips really night. worked out at times, <laughs> weren't they? It's yeah. just, you know, that's why I keep on going to back to the fact that, I don't, you know, in all that adversity while we did carry on and, you know, yeah. even thought about stopping. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just glad we did now. Yeah. Like, so, on, I'm it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely, you know, sort of, if anyone sort of asks for advice, I'll say just don't give up because you never know what's around the corner, you know, yeah. keep stick, if you stick at it. And, uh, it's hard though. Keep working. Yeah, yeah it's bloody hard. It's, uh, it's the music industry isn't what it was so, like 15 years ago. No, you it's know, not the, 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 the artist has now a long time ago, but, yeah. you know, you can, you know, you can still push your stuff in positive yeah. directions yeah. if you if you just carry on. You're making good music, people will notice. You just don't give in to the bullshit, really. I guess you know, keep your head down, mm -hmm. work hard. That's what yeah. you can do. Right, I always like to wrap things up with a little bit of a game of some sort. I'm always trying to do a, a play on like the name of the artist. Cool. So originally, I wanted to get you all on separate islands and see if you could survive the best. <laughs> you know, get Bear Grylls involved. Apparently, there's not the budget for that. <laughs> So I was told by It's not the budget for yeah. <laughs> Don't give that man a budget, <laughs> but it's bloody enough. So well, this is the this is the best idea I've come thing. up with, which is naming the brave with only okay. the brave. Lovely job. <laughs> so I'm just gonna give you a few superheroes and you've got to tell me who their real identity is. Okay. So this is Naming the brave with loading the brave. Excellent. It's it's yeah. I did yeah, taking it up. I think. Oh, <laughs> new panel show. <laughs> Can't be worse than half crap on this. No, <laughs> no offense. So uh, Sorry, Professor like X. <laughs> uh, Professor X. Oh yeah. Professor X. You got his last name? Do you know his last name? Oh, it's definitely oh, What is it? He's also he's also a prince of this country. 
Harry? No, William. No, the other is dead dad. Oh. <laughs> Harry Williams! Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, there you go, that one. Right, Catwoman. I was just going to say Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Halle Berry. Fair enough. Um, uh, Catwoman's name in real... In, in, in real life, yeah, her real name. No idea. No idea. Selena Carr. Selena Carr? How much for? <laughs> <laughs> right, easy one, Batman. Which one? There we go. Uh, this one I didn't actually know. He's got his jacket on. <laughs> I've got his top on. <laughs> I've got nothing on. Yeah. Right, six million dollar man. I had no idea. Oh. He has the same name as a wrestler. It was Stone Cold. Steve Austin? Yeah. Who? Yes, of course it is. But who? It was Lee Majors who played him. I know that much. So that's more than me. Okay, we need a point for that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just point. Right, Daredevil. Good luck if you get this, because... Ben Affleck. <laughs> we get all the actors, but... Um, Daredevil. Um, um, I can't even think of a clue. If you kill someone at a port... No, that doesn't work. At a what? Kill someone at a port. Port? Yeah. Right. That's Murdoch. Murdoch. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's, 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 that's the last name. Uh, the first name. Present stars in their eyes. Kelly, Matthew Kelly. Yeah, Matthew Burdock. We're Matthew Burdock. Kelly, Kelly would never Kelly, Kelly Burdock. Yeah, we'll get it. And last one, Rip Captain no. America. No, it's a fucking clue. You know what I'm saying? Leave. Not um, Captain America. I watched the film. I've seen it since it's in the war and stuff. I yeah. can't remember. Steven Rogers. Rogers. Steven Rogers. There we go. Oh, yeah. Um, we're rubbish. <laughs> so, I, I know he's played by Chris. Does that get off? That, that, that was naming the brave. We're learning the brave. Or not? <laughs> yeah. Awful. Yeah. 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 Right. So we've got the Redux coming out on June first. Yeah. And we've also got a few festivals. We've got Reading and these coming up as well. Yeah. What else have you got coming up for the rest of year? Or is that kind of your, your calendar's full of live new the re-release re Redux? I'll get it right as well. Uh, our calendar's just full. I mean, that, you know. We've got quite a few European festivals, haven't we? Um, yeah. And we've been announced that we're playing with Twin Atlantic. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be awesome. Um, I've there as well. And then, yeah, just... Uh, we, go, we go up to Europe in about four days' time, actually. Once this tour's over, we get day off, and then we go up to Europe for four weeks. weeks so yeah. we're just going to be doing loads of stuff over there. Um, and then we come back, and I think we've got a fair few festivals to play, like, say, Reading and Leeds and, and stuff like that, and European ones. Um, yeah, it's chock a block, and, and sometime we, we have to finish off writing the second album as well. So, I like the sound of that. Yeah, let's start now, actually. <laughs> and are we ready for 2018? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be that early. Yeah, um, yeah we're going to get that. I'm, I'm hoping we sort of get into the studio September, October time, so to do full legs. Um, but we'll see, because we've got a big long summer yeah. ahead. Um, that sounds good to me. Yeah, we'll see. We're, we're busy. That's how we like it. Yeah. Don't want to sit around too much. It's got to be a good much. sign. I mean, that's all. Yeah, it's good for me. Yeah. Keep making good music and keep enjoying it. Thanks a lot. Thank Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.